well, hello everyone. I hope there's some people out there listening. I'm sure there is. Oh yeah, there you are. <laughs> hello, uh, welcome to the concert. This is a, an Ensemble Reza music at midday concert with me, Steve. Um, this is a lovely series that the great Ensemble Reza have put on for, um, for, for during lockdown, just to keep us busy, keep us practicing and to give a bit of entertainment for you. I think this is the sixth one. So lovely for those of you who have been tuning in so far and welcome to the newbies. Um, obviously this has just come through my computer, so this sounds a bit rubbish and um, the birds are tooting away outside. So it might be a little bit disruptive. So forgive us for our sound. Um, apparently if we get a thousand subscribers, I think we're up to 500 so far. Um, if we get a thousand, we can do it on mobile phones. I don't know what that means. I don't know how that works, but subscribe, get your friends to subscribe as well. Um, so I've got a little bit of, a, a little content of kind of unaccompanied clarinet. As you can see, there's a piano there. I've normally played with piano. Now I'm here to do it. Never mind. But unaccompanied clarinet is a treat. So here we go. This is going to be, um, there's going to be four pieces, all, all fairly, fairly newish, but um, really, really nice and really good fun. Uh, the first piece is Richard Rodney Bennett, unaccompanied clarinet, a sonatina for unaccompanied clarinet. Richard Rodney Bennett, you, will probably all, you may not know him particularly, but you'll know his music. He wrote the music for the Orient Express film, Murder on the Orient Express. Four Winnings of the Funeral was him as well. Great, really great composer. Um, could do everything, could do film stuff, could do serious, um, serious music. Um, I think he was the first, he played the first performance of Stockhausen's Contactor in in England as well, so he could do he could do everything. Brilliant, brilliant composer. This was written for the 1983 uh, clarinet competition, national clarinet competition, I think, something like that. Um, lovely little piece, three movements. Uh, first one is fast, second one's called Night Thoughts, a bit thoughtful, a bit dreamy, and then a loud, rowdy ending. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you. 
Quartet for the End of Time by Messiaen, Olivier Messiaen. Um, and this was, uh, this was written in 1940, just after Messiaen had been captured by the Germans as part of the French army. And it was written in the prison camp that he was, he was in, interned in. Um, and uh, an amazing, absolutely amazing piece, a violin, cello, piano, clarinet with the instruments he had. There's a legend about about it, there was 5,000 in the audience and the cello had three strings and the piano didn't work and stuff and keys, that, that apparently it wasn't true at all, it was only 400 in the theatre. And um, the, the guards at the camp did go to get a, an extra string for the cellist, so <laughs> they had everything. But an amazing piece under amazing circumstances. Um, the Abyss of the Bird, the, the quartet at the, the end of time is not kind of the, the, the bad stuff of, um, you know, kind of, we're all gonna die kind of thing. It's the end of, it's kind of everlastingness of, of time is what we, um, Messian being very religious is a, a quote from the book of Revelation. Um, so it's this kind of dream of the, of the everlastingness of time. Um, he said of this one, the abyss is time with its sadness, its weariness. So it's kind of the beginning and the end um, of it. Um, and then the birds, abyss of the birds, the birds are the opposite to time. They are our desire for light, for stars, for rainbows and for jubilant songs quite right too, um, at a, a time like this. Um, it's, Messiaen was well known for his birdsong writing and notation of birdsong and copying them. Um, and this was his, his first appearance in his music. Um, blackbirds, apparently blackbirds and nightingale. Now I've got a couple of blackbirds out here down around the back. They're probably gonna join in. Um, and uh, I've kind of been listening to them to try and help me out. They've been great teachers actually. They didn't answer any of my questions, I would say. 
But just to get a feeling of how uh, the freedom that they that they sing is absolutely brilliant. And and um, Messiaen doesn't it just kind of writes to be free like a bird. Um, the other little gag with the quarter at the end of time is a slight hint towards musical time, getting away from the, <coughs> the rigidity of four four beats in the bar and simple time. There's all these additive rhythms that he he um, he uses um, to give the music a, a great freedom, influenced by Indian music and Greek Greek meter and stuff. Um, but it's a terrific piece, about five minutes, quite quite long, quite intense, but really, really brilliant. Um, in the test earlier on, some of the um, some of the low notes in the clanic make the make the sound go a little funny. But if we had a thousand subscribers, the, the low notes would be sound great. Um, so tell your friends, subscribe away. So here you are, the abyss of the birds.
uh, now, uh, a birthday treat for somebody. Um, this is going to be a, a little birthday treat for Maddie Platt in Cambridge. I hope you're listening, and I hope it's a nice birthday treat. Um, this is uh, with loads of love from Hannah and family. Hannah, Rich, B, Felix, and Lawrence. Um, Hannah Carter, you don't know, is the fantastic woman who runs Ensemble Reza. Uh, top woman, absolutely top woman. But um, Maddie Platt, I'm sure you're a top woman as well. So this is her birthday treat for you. This is Four Little Pieces by uh, John Mayer for Solo Clarinet. Um, Raga Music, it's called. Um, John Mayer was born in Bombay and, and came to live and study in England in the, I think in the 50s. And he was one of the first Indian musicians to play in the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. Um, and so got involved in the Western classical tradition, but wanted to try and inject some of his Indian music knowledge um, into it. Um, and I think Indo Jazz Fusion was the group that he, he started in, in the 60s, which combined jazz and, and Indian music. Um, and these are four little pieces that he wrote for one of his pals, John McCaw, to play, to try and introduce some of the Indian music styles um, into into concert into western concert music um messian used a lot of indian rhythms additive rhythms this uses them a little bit but in a much more gentle way the pieces are all quite short and quite sweet it's got an indian flavor to it but it's a little bit like a a, a kind of um a kind of beginner a beginner's curry <laughs> if you like so it's not so complicated but it has a has the mood on it and the rag each one has a different rag um with a different title. Um, gonna, the four that I'm going to play, the seven or eight, I think, all together, um, is going to be morning, afternoon, evening, and end of day. And these are ragas that we play at different times of different times of day. Um, obviously, the clarinet's got nothing to do with Indian music, um, but so, somehow these these kind of sounds tries to emulate the different different um, typical wind, wind instruments, wind sounds of um, Indian music. Uh, so here we go. John Ma John Mayer's Ragi music. I'll go do the titles as well. Gunakali is the first one. I do Shri. Uh, Gunakali is morning. Shri is afternoon. Pilu is evening, and Puravi is end of day. I think before I start, I'm going to get rid of some water. Excuse me. Have a quick glass of water. clarinet and the water and the leaks and the plumbing and stuff. Nightmare. Should have taken up the violin or something. Something easy. Okay, so here we are. Four movements from um, John Mayer's Raga music.
So, I come towards the end of the um, concert. Uh, this is the last piece is going to be Stravinsky. Uh, before I do the Stravinsky, I just want to say a couple of things about the, our sponsors, the Ensemble Rares are sponsors, who have been absolutely brilliant um, to allow this to keep going. It's a very tricky time for the Ensemble Rares of players because a lot of concerts have been cancelled and it's looking very grim for concerts in the future as well. I don't think there might not be very much to be had for some months. So um, this sort of thing is really, really good. And to have sponsors who can, can fund the musicians because they're going to be, there's a lot of work being lost by a lot of the players. Um, as well as having having some earnings, it gives us something to do as well to, to prepare for concerts and just keep our hand in. Um, so a great thanks. Um, Tim French of It's All, It's uh, it's Magic Events is uh, one of the really, really kind sponsors. Um, Orchard Shopping Centre as well and Savills. And as well as helping with these concerts, they help during the year with um, the community also, which I'm the conductor of, and the community events and um, some of the education work. So an enormous thanks to them. Um, it's, it really, really, really helps. It really helps keep everything going. And if anyone out there feels like a, doing a donation to the great work that Ensemble Reza does, both their concerts, the education work, and they've done some stuff at um, Ingfield Manor School, very special needs school in, in Billingshurst, um, terrific work they do. Um, anyone who feels like a donation, I'm sure there's a, there'll be a link somewhere and get in touch with Hannah Carter. Um, and I, I think I can see on the side here, there's lots of, Lots of lovely um, messages going to and fro. Hannah's going to be answering them. So if you've got anything to, any questions to ask about this concert, previous concerts, um, ask away. Hannah's there at the keyboard. Um, and I'm going to say another thing because our subscribers, funnily enough, our, our 500th subscriber was a great man, a great pal of mine, John Hawkins. Hello, John, if you're watching. Um, John, I don't know if you can see that. Maybe you can. Mm, don't know if you can. Uh, yes, there you are. That looks a bit better. Um, John Hawkins is a great composer and wrote some clarinet music, which I uh, recorded last year. And the CD's out on Amazon. Simplicius. It's one of the pieces. Oh, well, it's John Hawkins, music for clarinet, Simplicius. Um, and it's got a number. It's Stain Street, Stain Street Symphony at my new orchestra. has got a lot of the Reza players in it. And so they feature on it as well as a concerto. Buy it. You'll be bored. You know you've got nothing else to do. So you can buy this on Amazon and um, enjoy it for the afternoon. So, John Hawkins, thank you for being our 500th subscriber. Um, and Stravinsky. Here we go. Three pieces for unaccompanied clarinet. Um, these were written in 1919 um, during the Spanish flu epidemic. How topical is that? Um, you may know about the, the, the um, background of Stravinsky. He was quite, um, he's been very successful in the, uh, around the like, 1910, 1911 with um, ballets, ballet russe, ballets, uh, Firebird, Patricia Rite of Spring. So things were looking up for him. He's getting all sorts of, all sorts of lovely, lovely work, lovely commissions. Um, then, because of the First World War, it all dried up. And so he came up with this, this plan to write a little theatre piece that could um, tour around France. No piano. Obviously, a piano is going to be big and heavy, but it's just like seven instruments you could carry around, three actors, and they could make their own little stage, and they go from town to town just to entertain, make as much money as they could get, you know, just... Uh, if the whole village came, it would probably be quite, quite useful, and they could spread them around. So... It, it, Kind of made to measure, um, made to measure piece. Much different from Stravinsky's usual stuff of doing in the big theatres around the world. Um, unfortunately, after one performance, most of the players got flu and all the theatres shut down. We know what that's like, um, so they couldn't do it. But there was this this great piece. The Soldier's Tale was the piece that he wrote, um, uh, but no nowhere um, nowhere would play it. Um, so he had to raise some money somewhere. And one of his pals had another pal who was a very wealthy enthusiast for music and played the clarinet. Werner Reinhardt was his name. And he put the money up for some further performances. And there's a little thank you to uh, Stravinsky for... Uh, thank you to, to Werner Reinhardt for, for bailing him out. Stravinsky wrote these three p 
pieces for clarinet. Um, Reinhardt didn't do the first performance. I don't know. I, I, apparently, he was very good. He played in some, some early performances of the Firebird in, with professional orchestras. But um, the first performance of these went to someone someone else, the guy who played the Soldier's Tale performances. Um, they're pretty pretty tricky, I'll tell you that. Um, they're, um, there's a slow first one, a darting around second one, and a, a kind of ragtime third one. Um, the first one is all in the low register of the clarinet and it has a it's it's just like a little single line if you like like a like a Paul Clay line just kind of loops around doesn't do anything particularly um, particularly adventurous or anything but there's some some fantastic um, use of motifs and you, things you think you you recognise but they come earlier on intervals. Um, it's just like a little improvisation, absolutely brilliant little piece. Um, the very first, the first little tune has that, which is like the Volker Boatman. And he had, Sarinsky had written a, an arrangement of the Volker Boatman um, a couple of years before. He, he didn't mention it, that it was influenced, it's got nothing to do with it, apparently, but it must be in there somewhere. Um, the second movement is uh, in a kind of, this was written about 20 years before Messiaen's, no, no bar lines. And so this kind of sense of having no time, no, um, no pulse, no beat. And again, it's just like a bit more of a florid improvisation. Um, very beautiful. It's got a, a little bit in the middle, which is kind of, kind of interesting to me because um, I've never really totally worked out how to do it, but I, I think I've got it now. Um, in Soldier Soul, one of the instruments is the drum, the, very basic drum kit, and um, we have this little bit in the, on the clarinet part. And it seems to me to look like a bass drum cymbal. Um, the, the writing is quite kind of similar to, to the Soldier's Tale, and a little bit in Le Nos, um, which was written a few, few few years before. So maybe this is kind of in Stravinsky's head as a as a contrast. Um, and then the last movement is a um, it's a rank time. Um, apparently, the story goes was that, that Stravinsky was interested in jazz and rank time and um, got some music sent to him. And he was very interested in the rhythms. Hadn't, he, apparently, he said he hadn't heard jazz, but it, he, had, he had been to some, some jazz, a great enthusiast for it. Um, but he made use of all the rhythms of, of jazz, but in a it, it, almost in a, a slightly cubist kind of way. Um, so all the, the, the pulse of the, the regular pulse that we have in jazz is, is kind of lost. Um, and there's all the gestures and the, the slight, the rhythms, the first bar <laughs> is very jazzy. But then it, we have strange beats, strange things put together in an odd way, in a very similar kind of way to my, to my ears. As, as, um, well, my ears rather than my eyes, because I don't know that much about painting but very similar to the cubists who were working at the same time and Stravinsky knew, knew um, Picasso and, and the cubist painters um, and it's almost a similar kind of thing of just kind of distorting the planes distorting the shapes of things um, it's an amazingly new way of writing at the time from 19, 1919 but um, incredibly exciting incredibly hard there was a, a, a I don't think I've got it got it to hand you can look it up you can get up later. There's a, a painting of Picasso called The Three Musicians, um, which is, is so obviously three people, but like very two-dimensional boxes and very cubist. And um, it's a, it, I think it's in the Philadelphia Philadelphia Museum. Um, it's very famous. It's, it's worth worth looking up um, to have a look at it. But everything is this. It's a very vibrant painting. Everything you can kind of work out what is there, but it's to my to my ears, it's the same. This is this kind of music that those three musicians would be playing. One of them is a clarinet player, and there's a, a guitar player, um, and it's the sort of vibrant, jolly, modern kind of kind of music. Especially the last one, really great, brilliant to play. I hope brilliant to listen to. Um, thanks, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to tune in next week as well. I don't know, I think it's Jane Horton next week, I think. Um, but here we go. This is three. Oh, uh, one other thing, just in case there's any, any purist clarinet players out there. Um, the first two are supposed to be for the clay, a clarinet in A, and the last one is a clarinet in B flat. 
I can't be bothered to do that. Um, I think that may be Stravinsky just having having a bit of fun. At the clarinet plays, space. he does say preferably, and I'm, I'm afraid or Igor there's no no chance in that today. Uh, so here we go, three pieces for clarinet. I'll just give it a little bit of a little bit of cleaning again. So, oh, I'm going to get a bit of water as well. Tempt you. Tempt you with me starting. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Well, thanks very much for watching. Have a nice lunch. You can have a coffee. You can have a sit down and have a rest and take up the clarinet and do some practice. <laughs> Great. Thanks very much. And thanks very much for the sponsors. And thanks very much indeed for Hannah and Ensemble Reza for being such a great group and to making this happen. Thank you very much.